everyone. Welcome back to Ash Dev. In this video, we'll add weapon sway and bobbing, introduce camera shake, and show you how to prevent weapon clipping into walls. Also, this project is now available for you on our Discord server for two weeks. For our Patreon supporters, all the projects are free forever. Thank you for supporting us. This is made possible by your contributions. To add weapon sway, start by creating a new script named weapon anim. Within this script, define three float variables, positional sway, rotational sway, and sway smoothness. Also create a vector three named initial position to store the initial position of the gun, and a quaternion named initial rotation to store the initial rotation of the gun. In the start function, save the gun's local position and rotation to initial position and initial rotation. Next, create a function named apply sway. In this function, define two floats, mouse X and mouse Y, which will be assigned to the respective mouse input values. Then create a vector three named position offset, which is a new vector three with the X and Y values set to mouse X and mouse Y, and the Z value set to zero, all multiplied by the positional sway amount. Similarly, create another quaternion named rotation offset, which is a new vector three converted to quaternion, whose X value equal to the negative mouse Y, the Y value equal to the negative mouse X, and the Z value equal to mouse X, all multiplied by the rotational sway amount. Here, the X and Y values are swapped because the sideways movement of the mouse affects rotation in the Y axis, and the vertical movement of the mouse affects rotation in the X axis. The negative value of mouse Y inverts the sway, making the weapon lag behind rather than moving ahead. For the Z axis, using the mouse X value creates a tilt effect in the sideways direction, matching the input from the X axis. To apply the weapon sway, lerp the local position of the gun to the initial position minus the position offset based on sway smoothness. Similarly, lerp the local rotation of the gun to the initial rotation plus the rotation offset also based on the sway smoothness. The initial position of the gun is its normal static position without any movement. When the gun isn't moving, the position offset is zero. Therefore, the gun will be lerped to its initial position, making it appear normal. When there is mouse input, a small position offset that is mouse X and mouse Y multiplied by the sway amount is subtracted from the initial position, creating the sway effect. After stopping the movement, the position offset becomes zero again, and the gun returns to its initial position. The same logic applies to the rotation. Instead of subtracting, we add the rotation offset because we want the gun to rotate in the direction it's moving. And you might have noticed that I multiplied both of them instead of adding, but this is how we add quaternions. Finally, call the apply sway function in the update method. Then go back to the editor, attach the script to the pistol, and set the variables and it'll work. Next, let's add gun bobbing. First, create three floats, bobbing amount, bobbing speed, and bob timer. Then create a variable to reference the player. In the start function, get the player controller's reference through the root game object, which is the topmost parent. Create a function named apply bobbing. In this function, create a float named move speed which will be the sum of the horizontal and vertical axis inputs. Next, create a float named Bob Offset. Then check if the move speed is greater than 0.1 and if the player is grounded. Now to access the character controller, you have to make it public first and then you can use it. Then in the if statement, increment Bob Timer by time.deltaTime multiplied by bobbing speed. Then set Bob Offset equal to mathf.signBobTimer multiplied by bobbing amount. Here's an explanation. Adding time.delta time to bob timer makes it increase over time. Multiplying it by bobbing speed accelerates this increase. For example, if time.delta time is 0.5 and bobbing speed is two, without bobbing speed, bob timer becomes one in two frames. With bobbing speed, it reaches one in a single frame. Using mathf.signBobTimer, returns a value oscillating between minus one and one. Multiplying this by bobbing amount scales the oscillation, effectively setting the bobbing amplitude. 
the bobbing speed controls the frequency of the oscillation, making the bobbing effect faster or slower. And if the player isn't grounded or moving, then just set the bob timer to zero and lerp bob offset to zero. To apply the gun bobbing effect, add the bob offset to the local position of the gun on the Y axis. Call the apply bobbing function in the update method. Finally, go back to the editor, set the variables, and the effect will work nicely. And optionally, if you want it to change when player runs, then you can multiply the bobbing speed further with the player's current speed multiplier. Additionally, I recreated the variables for different inputs, which is not very efficient. A better approach would be to create a separate script for managing input. Define different input variables in that script and use those wherever needed in your project. This will make your code cleaner and more maintainable. For the recoil animation, first create two floats named recoil amount and recoil smoothness. Then create a boolean named is recoiling and a vector3 named current recoil. Next create a function named apply recoil. In this function, create a vector3 named target recoil and initialize it to zero. Check if is recoiling is true. If it is, set target recoil to a new vector3 with x and y values set to zero and the z value set to minus recoil amount. Then check if the distance between current recoil and target recoil is less than 0.1, indicating that the current recoil has reached the maximum recoil amount. If it has, set is recoiling to false to stop moving the gun further backward. Outside the if statement, lerp the current recoil to target recoil based on recoil smoothness multiplied by time dot delta time. Finally, to apply the recoil, subtract current recoil from the gun's local position. Then get to the gun script and get the reference to the weapon anim script and set is recoiling to true in handle shoot function. Return to the editor, set up the variables and ensure it's working. For camera shake, we'll use impulses. If you're not familiar with impulses, here's a brief explanation. To add camera shake, we'll need two components, the impulse source and the impulse listener. The way this works is that the impulse source sends an impulse signal across the map, similar to a wave. The impulse listeners in the map are constantly listening for any impulse signals. When they detect one, the camera shake effect is triggered. In our case, the weapon will have the impulse source component and the camera will have the impulse listener. After attaching the impulse source and the impulse listener, set up the communication channel. I am using the default channel for now, but you can create your own. Choose your preferred shake shape, configure other variables and test it in play mode to ensure it's working as desired. Now, let's get to the coding part. In the gun class, create a variable to hold the reference to the impulse source. In the start function, get the reference to this component. Then in the handle shoot function, generate the impulse and the recoil shake is ready. Additionally, you can also add rotational recoil animation by using the similar logic, just set the target rotational recoil's x-axis value to the rotational recoil amount. And then, similar to positional recoil lerp, set the current rotational recoil to target rotational recoil. And lastly, to apply the rotation, multiply the current rotational recoil with the local rotation as it's a quaternion. Lastly, to avoid weapon clipping, Create a new layer named Weapon and set the Weapon Holders layer to this new layer. Next, create another camera and name it Weapon Camera. Set the Weapon Camera's render type to Overlay Mode. In the culling mask of the Weapon Camera, select only the Weapon layer. Remove the audio listener from the Weapon Camera. Finally, in the Main Camera, deselect the Weapon layer from the culling mask and add the Weapon Camera to the Camera Stack. This setup ensures that the weapon won't clip into walls. And that concludes this part. I hope you found the series helpful. If you need any additional assistance, feel free to join our Discord server. We're here to help.